Tim Boyle joins us uh, now in a first on CNBC interview. Tim, great to see you as always. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for including me. So, so have these supply chain issues lasted much longer and been more severe than, than you expected? Yeah, I think that's accurate. You know, we, we expected to, uh, to be have some moderation by now. It looks like we're going to have these kinds of impacts you know, on our business probably for at least through the first quarter or perhaps longer in 22. So, so does that really affect the holiday quarter significantly then? Well, we have a lot of merchandise in this in the business already in in the U.S. and, and in, in other parts of the world. And frankly, by the way, uh, the bulk of the disruption on deliveries looks like it's in the U.S. Our our businesses in Canada and in Europe are are closer to uh, to more normalized activity than we are in the U.S. Uh, but you know, we have the next few weeks are going to be really critical in order to get merchandise into our stores and into our distribution centers and then beyond to, uh, to the stores of our customers. China's been a, a weak spot for you, Tim. Are you seeing any evidence of a turnaround as a result of, of some of the moves you're making there? Well, we've talked about, you know, the fact that we've underperformed in China and the fact that we needed to make changes, which we did, both in the senior leadership as well as in, in some of the support uh, uh, positions in China. And we're seeing a, a change there and an improvement uh, you know, it's it's we talk about it being the largest single geographic top um, opportunity for our company, and we need to have the best people we can there. And I think we've made great moves to getting ourselves really, really well positioned in that market. Just uh, on the supply chain stuff, I mean, to, to what extent, Tim, do you think you will have to hike prices? We were just discussing uh, Janet Yellen's comments on inflation and whether it's transitory or not. Do, do you think that we're going to see significant increases and will they last through next year? Well, you know, we, we're in the process right now of pricing our merchandise for fall 22. We have a long lead time. And we saw price increases there of some significance in the, you know, close to double digit uh, in some areas. And um, so I expect that we're going to continue to see price pressure, not only from the commodities that go into our garments and our footwear, but also the continued expansion of the costs of logistics and getting the merchandise into the stores. So I, I'm uh, a little less hopeful as it relates to a moderation of the inflation, frankly. Um, but, uh, you know, we'll have to we'll have to continue to, to change our pricing to accommodate it. And, and at the end of the day, consumers are going to make the decision if they want they want to pay more or if they would rather pay less and that that will that will impact uh, many of the parts of the uh, supply chain as it relates to the commodity prices. Yeah, definitely not using the T word. So, so Tim, I don't know if you saw, but your your competitor, Patagonia, to the, yesterday came out and, and doubled down on their stance that they made last June to boycott Facebook and not advertise on the platform. Here's a tweet. Patagonia stopped all paid advertising on Facebook platforms last June because they spread hate speech and misinformation about climate change and our democracy. We continue to stand by that boycott 16 months later. And they're also calling on other companies to do that. In light of some of these new Facebook revelations from, from the whistleblower, are, are you, how do you, how do you deal with that? Are you advertising on Facebook? Do you double down because your competitor has stopped or, or do you have issues also with some of these problems? Well, I think certainly Facebook could uh, could invest more in managing the content in their on their platform, and I get it that it's difficult, you know, with with free speech in the United States to to be completely uh, adhering to certain uh, principles. But I don't think they're doing enough. But frankly, we prefer to work within the system, and we're not we're not adding to our marketing budgets to take advantage of somebody's vacation, um, vacating uh, that space. But we we want to work together. Uh, and make these um, changes from within the system. And we've had serious discussions with the people who are responsible at Facebook for this kind of topic. And hopefully we've, we've uh, helped them move along and have a, a, great, a greater uh, ability to, to manage this stuff uh, from, a, from a customer standpoint versus an I, adversary. I'm, cur I'm curious what that engagement looks like, how, how high level it is and how receptive they are and, and what you're telling them. 
Well, I think, as I said, they could invest more. So when we've approached them and asked them to spend more time on it, they've responded um, appropriately uh, from a, a verbal interaction, but we still have yet to see a, a perfect adaption of what we would expect to see on, on controlling hate speech.